Hello everybody, welcome to The Forge. Uh, I'm Sully, your host for today. I got a question for you. You ever heard somebody say, well, you can't make a, a knife out of a railroad spike? I'm sure you've heard it. Uh, and the reason a lot of people say that is because you can't harden it. And if you can't harden it, it's not really a knife. So we call it a knife-shaped object or something like that. Um, but the gist of the thing is, is uh, there's not enough carbon in a railroad spike to really be effective. I mean, yes, you can make a knife out of it, and yes, it will cut stuff for a little while. It's just, I mean, you're always going to be sharpening it, you know, it's unless you put in a high carbon bit, you know, like I, I did one that had a, a 41, for, Sanmai 4140 bit in the middle of it. That thing's great. Um, but um, today I, I set out on an adventure to uh, do a little bit of experimenting, and um, yeah, turns out, um, the, what everybody thinks is true isn't, unless I'm wrong. So, uh, I could be mistaken, but I'm going to lay this video out the, the, way, that, uh, the way it happened. Uh, I was messing around the other day at, in Midland in the Forge, and um, I went to file a piece of railroad spike that I had just quenched off, and it skated a file. And I was like, wait, what? And I tried it again and again and again, and I'm like, no, oh, that's not possible. And I grabbed another piece, it was just like it. Uh, they're the ends that I cut off when I did my sword build. No, it's not here. Oh, it is, it's in the other other room. But the, when I took those two railroad spikes, I cut them off, and then I scarf welded them together, and then punched a hole through it. Well, those two end pieces uh, were the ones that I was messing with. And one of them, I hardened it. And I was like, well, you know, maybe it's just my imagination. I grabbed the other one and it, boy, I just take the material right off. And uh, so today I set up upon, because there were a lot of variables in question on that particular day. So today I decided to isolate variables and one thing at a time do different things and see if I could repeat the outcome. So stick around. I think you're going to enjoy this one. Hey, you made a fire. Ow. Hey, shh, quiet. Clearly, that's not hard. is just flux with cast iron powder in it. Probably about a 50-50 mix. Now I'm going to set that in the fire. I'm going to bring it up to forge welding temperature and uh, just bring it out here and smack, 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 smack it on the anvil and then quench it immediately and uh, see what happens. Last time I did that, I case hardened the railroad spike. And uh, I'm drying it again. See if I can repeat the results.
I don't rightly know. Okay, here we go, right back here where I haven't messed with it. You be the judge. I did burn it right here at the end though, but. Huh. You can see it just kick away from me. Huh. Well, I am just fascinated. I'm not really sure what to make of that. You know, I thought maybe the first time was a complete accident, but. There you go. All right. I should have been prepared. So that's S cam shavings. Okay, and I don't think you guys can probably see this or not, but uh, on looking at it, you can totally see right here and right here where the uh, the powder is uh, melted onto the or forge welded, if you will, onto the uh, railroad spike. Uh, just now got the little stuff set up. I'm gonna see how it sparks. Okay, we're gonna start with uh, the back end of the spike. Okay, now the cast side. And the F cam side. So the S cam side doesn't look like it really did that much. Ah. So, uh, that was pretty darn interesting, I thought. Uh, you know, I didn't expect the cast iron side to, to spark like that, uh, considering cast iron doesn't really spark like that. Um, and I expected the side with the S cam, there's a lot more of it on there. Where I put the S-cam uh, shavings on there, I expected that to uh, do a little bit better. Hmm. So now, I gotta get some more cast iron powder because I, I mixed it in flux because I had a, I had another project going on and then uh, I decided to shit can that. Yeah, let me see if I can find some more cast iron powder. See you in a minute. Come on. 
Okay. There's two sides fluxed, cast ironed, and fluxed. Okay, so this is where we're at. Uh, I got it flattened out. It's by no means going to be a pretty spike knife. It doesn't have to be. That's not the point. Uh, I got it flattened out. I put a, I hammered the bevels in. I ground the bevels to a you know fairly semi oblique edge. Or that's probably the wrong word. Um, and now uh, we're uh, going to heat treat the blade. Uh, my Estimation, I think it's going to be hard on the spine and not the edge. Uh, that's what I'm anticipating. Um, just because I ground, I'm pretty sure I ground off all the high carbon off of the edge. I mean, I don't know that, but that's what I would guess. So, we'll find out when it get, gets out. If it, if it, if it even hardens, uh, you know, who's to say? So, the back. Digs in right there. Yep, so it digs in up here because I didn't, you know, remember. I only did the, the end of it. be damned.
That's fucking weird. Excuse my French, but even the edge is hard. Huh. Okay. Next step, I'm gonna wire wheel it because I don't want to. I don't want to take any metal off. Uh, just I just want to take the grunge off. I'm gonna wire wheel this thing shiny, and I'm gonna etch it and see if we can see that uh, uh, that cast iron. Let's see if it left any kind of a pattern uh, on it or, or anything. And uh, then after that, I'm gonna see if I can snap it in half because I'm not gonna temper it. You know, I mean, this just this is all an experiment. So yeah, we'll see if it bends or if it breaks. All right, I'm gonna try to hold the phone and do this. I'm gonna come up out of the etch. Hmm, I don't know. Nothing all that remarkable, really. Let me go rinse it off. All right, so. That's the way it came out. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Alright, well I hadn't thought of that either apparently. And we'll just see what happens here. Snap test, take one. Wow. And there you have it. Uh, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, please tell me in the comments section uh, uh, if if you've seen this before or I don't know. I mean, uh, I've never heard of this. I don't think any anybody I know hasn't heard of it. But I mean, you saw the pictures. I mean, here it is. Uh, you know, in two pieces. And I mean, I just think it snapped right off. And, um, yeah. So, let me know in the comments section what you think. Uh, or even suggestions to change things up a little bit. Uh, maybe there's a way to do it differently, or... I don't know. I mean, this this just boggled my mind. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be trying this with all kinds of different metals. You know, I've got 1095 powder. I've got 1040. I've got 4150... Um, well, hell, any kind of steel I got, I can make powder because I got a bandsaw. Uh, you know, this was cast iron, uh, cast iron powder, powder, and uh, the only thing I got left to do is I'm going to see if this thing will uh, bend. So I'm going to temper it back and uh, see if it'll bend. We'll see. Oh, and right before I go, just tempered it. So, hit me up in the comment section. Uh, tell me what's going on here. Or give me your theory or give me your thoughts or whatever. Uh, yeah, that was freaking awesome. This is Sully at Shamrock Forge saying, until next time, keep on forging on.